Coming up tonight on YCN News, the New Hampshire Attorney General orders a museum to comply with the law. A local New Hampshire ski shop pays tribute to a legacy skier. And the New Hampshire Sunapee Library remains a popular draw for residents and visitors. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening. It's Monday, April 20th. I'm Laura James. Welcome to YCN News. The New Hampshire Attorney General is ordering the president of the Veterans Museum of New Hampshire to stop asking for donations or collecting military artifacts on behalf of the museum. Attorney General Joseph Foster says a preliminary injunction order against the museum and its president, Henry Pratt, comes today after several years of trying to bring the state-registered charitable organization into compliance with the law. The complaint alleges the museum and Pratt violated on more than one occasion. This includes falsely reporting with the State Charitable Trust Unit that the Veterans Museum of New Hampshire had a full board of directors and that it sought monetary donations through a website to build a museum across the state's Veterans Cemetery in Bosquin on land neither Pratt nor the Veterans Museum owns. A.G. Foster asks that anyone who has donated money or military tools, weapons or mementos to the Veterans Museum of New Hampshire to please call the Charitable Trust Unit. In other New Hampshire news, you may notice his ski shop at the Rotary near the base of Mount Sunapee, but the face behind the famous Bob Skinner Ski and Sports Shops passed away earlier this month at the age of 96. Robert Skinner was born in Manchester, New Hampshire, but made a name for himself locally while a member of the invincible 1939 Dartmouth Ski Team in a time when the college made up the majority of the national and Olympic ski teams. YCN spoke with Frank McConnell, who is the current owner of Bob Skinner's Ski and Sport Shop in Newberry on the life and legacy of Skinner. Uh, Bob was a great ski racer. He was um, a gentleman who competed after college, of course, after the war, and, and was always in the top two or three in all downhill events, which mainly he won most of all of them. And uh, there's one event that really, uh, string, that really strikes a, a note for him greatly. Um, and I can't remember what year, it was 1980 or 81, at Killington, and he forgot to put down his age and he was the last person down the course because they penalized him by not putting on his age because he should have been the first because of uh, the older goes first. Well, he beat the field by a second and a half anyways, just to prove that yes, I can do this at the age of 52. So really just a wonderful man. Uh, the impact in this area with Bob Skinner Ski Shop <clears throat> has been terrific. His sponsorship and his concern for Anybody who was very interested in ski racing or learned to ski for that matter, he would throw money at. He would, he would provide product for. He would make sure that if you can't afford a race, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to help you get to that race. He fostered skiing, but also his passion though was ski racing. Well, this week marks exactly six months since the new Abbott Library building in Sunapee, New Hampshire, has been open to the public. The 7,200 square foot building is more than double the size of the building that housed the town's library since 1926 and cost about $2.7 million when all was said and done. The facility offers more than triple the parking than what was available at the old building and is now easily accessible to patrons using wheelchairs and strollers. Inside the library's collection of children's computers, activity rooms, a fish tank and gas fireplace have all been awed by those who've stopped by as well as its brightness and ability to house more books. Library Director Mary Danko told YCN News that both patrons and her staff had had, nothing good, have had nothing but good things to say about this quarter mile move from Route 11 to Sunipi Circle. We've had about an 80% increase in library visits and our circulation's increased and the number of people who have gotten new library cards has increased by over 230%. So we're really gratified by that. We knew once we built the building that a lot of people would want to come. Uh, 
it's it's just really enjoyable to have people come in and their eyes get really big and they look around and um, we just hear all kinds of positive comments all the time. Um, some people who've never gotten a library card before because of the new library are coming in and getting library cards. We loved our old building. It was a great solid building, but it had a couple of issues. One was parking. So with only seven parking spaces, if they were all filled, people would drive on by. And also access. We had um, steps that went into the front. We did have a ramp, but um, it was long. And then to get to the basement, there were steps. So this building is just just much better suited for people who have any type of physical challenges whatsoever. Now we've got space to kind of spread our work out. I'm finding that we actually work more efficiently. And the other thing that's happened is we're getting more volunteers, which we love. So even though we've had all this increased use, we have wonderful, wonderful volunteers that are helping us shell books, doing little projects. Um, that has considerably helped our workload a lot. Be sure to visit abbottlibrary.org for more information on events and activities at the library. Coming up on YCN News, a fire in Chester, Vermont is being investigated. A bill passed in Vermont will make it a crime for many convicted felons to possess firearms. And Mike Pazone updates us on local runners and the Boston Marathon when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. A home fire on Saturday night in Chester, Vermont, may be of suspicious origin, fire investigators say that, according to WNTK Radio. The house and barn at 2703 Green Mountain Turnpike was engulfed in flames upon firefighters' arrival. The fire was called into dispatchers around 11 p.m. that night. The small barn near the house was saved, but not the home. Seven fire companies worked the scene until 3 a.m. Sunday morning. Chester firefighters remained on site, monitoring for hot spots until 11 a.m. yesterday. Chester police seek the public's help regarding anyone who may have seen someone in the area of the property before the fire. They're being asked to call the police department. There's an update to a story regarding the fatal shooting of a man outside of a Springfield, Vermont convenience store on Saturday. An arrest warrant has been issued for 30-year-old Gregory Allen Smith of Springfield, Vermont. Smith is charged by police with allegedly committing second-degree murder in the shooting death of Wesley Wing. The 37-year-old Wing died from a gunshot wound yesterday morning at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center where he'd been med-flighted Saturday night. Police say Smith is now operating a 2004 Buick Rendezvous with New Hampshire registration 336-4095. The car also has a pink NY simple symbol on the rear window and a zebra heart decal on the left rear passenger side window. Smith is last believed to be wearing blue jeans, a black shirt, gray and lime green running shoes, and wearing a New York Yankees baseball cap with lime green and white lettering. Anyone with information on Smith's whereabouts is asked to contact Springfield Police or any state police barracks or just call 911. Also in Vermont, new firearm regulations may become law now that state representatives on Friday approved a bill to keep people with severe mental illness and convicted felons from owning guns. That according to the Valley News. The bill passed on an 80 to 62 vote in favor of tighter gun access, similar to a bill passed earlier in Vermont state senators. However, there's a difference between the House and Senate versions of the bill, a point which may be hammered out in a conference committee. The difference has to do with an 18-month waiting period before someone with a mental illness can be proven well enough to seek gun ownership rights. This in the Senate only. The House version does not require the waiting period. Coming up on YCN News, Lynn Solomon speaks with a familiar face. Abby Peel, who you see here on YCN News, is also owner of Strategic Social Media. When Solomon sat down with her for a chat, we'll have that interview when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Mike Pazome. Well, we may have gotten a little spoiled last week with all that warm weather and sun because it looks like we're in for nothing but April showers for the bulk of the week. Temperatures will bottom out at about 43 degrees tonight, with a 90% chance showers will continue right into the morning hours tomorrow. That rain should taper off around noon tomorrow, with a high of 57 degrees and winds maxing out at about 10 miles per hour. 
Skies will become partly cloudy tomorrow evening with a low of 37 degrees, though there's still a 30% chance of showers before midnight. Wednesday will bring more of the same with a high of 56 degrees, partly sunny skies, and a 40% chance of showers throughout the day. Temperatures will drop to a low of 37 Wednesday evening. Now let's take a look at our community calendar to see what's happening in the area. The Sullivan County Democratic Caucus will be held tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. in the second floor conference room of the Moody Building on Opera House Square in Claremont, New Hampshire. All registered Democrats in Sullivan County are eligible to vote in the elections for county officers and two at-large delegates to the New Hampshire State Convention. The Bells Falls Historical Society will celebrate its 50th anniversary with a presentation called Celebrating the Native Plants of Vermont in the Connecticut River tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. at the Old Wyndham Hotel Lobby on the Square in Bells Falls, Vermont. Call the number on the screen for more information. The African Children's Choir will perform at the Claremont Opera House in Claremont, New Hampshire on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Proceeds benefit African Children's Choir programs such as education, care, and relief and development. There were a couple exciting games on Friday as local teams wrapped up opening week, but none more thrilling than the Newport softball team's opener with the Golden Eagles. It wasn't always pretty, but the Newport softball team still got the result it was hoping for in its regular season debut against Guilford, earning a 5-4 walk-off win behind some clutch hitting from freshman Kendall Hamilton. The Tigers held a 4-2 lead heading into the top of the seventh inning until a pair of unearned runs with two outs knotted things at 4-all. But Newport made sure to take care of business in the home half of the inning to avoid extras, as a pitch to the foot of Gabby Scanlon set up a dramatic walk-off triple by Hamilton, worth a 1-0 start to the season. Starting pitcher Stephanie Carl and third baseman Mariah Chase also tallied RBI in the contest, with Carl nodding the score at 2-2 with this single in the sixth, and Chase giving the home team a one-run edge moments later on a sacrifice fly. Carl earned the win from the circle, allowing no earned runs on three hits while striking out six. Carl said after the game she was certainly nervous heading into her first outing of the spring, and that she was thrilled to come away with a win despite a sloppier than usual game. Um, I was kind of having a little rough start because I was a little nervous too as a veteran player, but started to come into the last couple innings and I felt really good to be back in the circle coming off of my injury last year. <laughs> it feels amazing to win our first game. Definitely got a lot of stuff to work on, but we can, we can work through it. Newport coach Sam McNeil echoed those statements, saying the team's season opening victory is a sign of where the program is headed. Guilford is uh, definitely a very good team. Um, you know, when, when I was speaking with them um, after the game, she was saying, you know, this is the best Newport team that, that she's seen because last time they were up here, they won some crazy score of like 30 to 2. So, you know, that says a lot for the program that, that we started to build here in Newport. Um, and, and a lot for those girls, you know, a very young team, no seniors at all on the team. And to have a freshman come out and, you know, get a walk off home run slash triple, but in the book a triple, but for her, it's a home run. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a huge win for us. You know, it was very unsettling over there for a lot of the girls to, you know, to go down early on errors, to come back and then go down again because of errors, and then, you know, be there a 4 4 tie going into the bottom of the seventh. Again, make a couple more mistakes on the base paths and still win it so you know we had I believe five six errors in that uh, in that game every one of their runs aren't earned because of it and, and you know and for me that's unsettling because we talked about all that stuff um, you know a lot of it is just the nerve setting in it, it wasn't even so much communication issues on that side it was just physical mistakes something that they're gonna have to work out on their own the Tigers were slated to take on Muscoma today though that game was postponed due to rain the Lebanon baseball team scored seven runs in the top of the seventh inning Friday to knot things up, but officials were forced to call the game due to darkness before a winner could be decided. The teams will finish the game at a later date, potentially May 20th when the Generals travel to Lebanon. The Sunapee softball team earned its first win of the season Friday with help from a pair of home runs and some solid pitching. Katie Frederick and Lexi Hamilton each homered in the contest, while Faith Hamilton earned the win from the circle in a complete game effort. Larpenter also drove in what proved to be the game-winning run. Today also marked the running of the 119th Annual Boston Marathon, which featured a handful of local runners from both New Hampshire and Vermont. Check out the list on your screen to see how they fared, or visit BAA.org for complete results. That does it for YCN Sports. I'm Mike Pizzone. Thanks so much, Mike. 
Coming up next, Capital Connections' John O'Connor brings us part one of an interview with the board of directors president of Turning Points Network. That's Pat Whitney, and we'll have that interview when YCA News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment.